Whew, okay, I'm bringing you in after I've solved this puzzle because uh, <laughs> a 15 by 15 square I was not expecting. Yikes, that took me a little bit of time. But I've double checked already and I'm pretty sure all of these meet the dimensions. Let's check it. Correct, phew, okay. Don't need to make you guys suffer through that. Water. Get to learn all about water this week. Come on. Oh no. Don't fail the town, girl. Yeah. Please work on the dance. No, I need you to dance. I need you to dance. Why? <sighs> okay. I can read about my water now. That was the cave. Water. Many sediments in a cave are formed by alluvial deposits, when soil, mud, etc. are carried in by flowing water. Kalen had evidence of subterranean rivers and heavy rainfall, which means bones or artifacts found were likely moved into the cave from their original location. And... Oh man, we're almost maxed out on our hearts! Amazing cook. Professional rugby player and still has the travel bug. It's He's still in a loop square. Yep. Oops, that's not what I wanted. I want to go to my stats? Yes, okay. Let's check Monday. Monday lab, yes. Volunteer, yes. It's funny, they always show Shoji with DeAndre, but I've never actually seen Shoji and DeAndre volunteering at the same time. Lab, good. Internet, yes, catch. Please. Uh, cave, yep. Volunteer. Cave, yes, catch. Uh, cave, yep. Volunteering. Yeah, looks like the same old, same old. Sh shame old. Let's start. <laughs> oh no. Good luck. Alright! Good start. Lucky. Lucky ducky. Ah, uh, not enough. Ah, uh, pretty good. Jewelry. Man, the lab goes so much faster than the cave. Ow, my hand! Why am I so diligent and rational? Uh, okay. 17, 24... Ooh. 15, 21, 20. Eh, I had a feeling. Oh well. Uh, okay. Decent. I got two things to read about whenever I get the moment. Ugh. How can you, girl? You can't be failing. This is terrible. Ugh. And this was done entirely in colored pencil? You're really skilled at this. Oh, please tell me the sneezes are over. Okay, now they are. Apparently, his skills are so amazing, they made me sneeze. Ah, Shoji looks so pleased. Hendrik looked over the finished cutout laid on the table. Shoji had recently put the finishing touches on it and declared it complete. Um, thank you. I kept it on the minimalistic side, but it should work for tomorrow. Not bad, not bad at all. Hey, since you're great at artsy stuff, would you be up for overseeing the face painting station tomorrow? F face painting? Or would it be too different from what you're used to? No, I've used paints before. <laughs> Hendrick's face during this, he's like, uh, Rosemary, what are you doing to this incredibly talented artist? Shoji flashed me a save me expression and I stepped in. It's something to think about at least, Shoji. I don't think she's expecting an answer right away. Rosemary faltered slightly and I knew she was the type who liked snap decisions. However, she turned to Hendrick who nodded respectfully. 
It's no problem. The chores won't be officially assigned until tomorrow morning anyway. Hendrik thanked Shoji once again, and the two of us went outside. Should I, or... The face painting? I think you can do it. Think so? It's all one-on-one, -on -one, and I'm sure it'll mostly be kids wanting a flower or a butterfly on their cheek. Just ask a question like, who their favorite superhero is, and they'll go on while you focus on the face painting. I see. Like, what's your favorite locket? Or is it Mokay? Oh, I love the cake-shaped one. I keep forgetting its real name because I always call it Bun- I stopped when I realized it wasn't a real question, and he laughed. <laughs> Since you put it that way, I'll definitely consider it. Before we could discuss it further, his cell phone rang. I grinned, recognizing the video game theme. Muttering a quick apology, Shoji walked a few paces away, then pulled out his phone. He glanced at the phone display quizzically and hit the receive button. Hello? We oui, say Soji. Qua? My mare is at the hospital. Oh, his mom's at the ho in the hospital. I froze at the word hospital, and Shoji's voice lowered to a frightened whisper. I knew it was impolite to eavesdrop, but I didn't want to leave with upsetting news being delivered. I worriedly took a step forward, waiting until Shoji hung up. When the call ended, Shoji turned around looking pallid. Shoji, what was that about? You mentioned the hospital. Uh. He took a deep breath, struggling to ease his nerves and remain calm. One of the employees found my mom unconscious at the bottom of the stairs. He called an ambulance right away, and isn't sure how severe it is, but... We don't know the details. Let's get you to the hospital first. When does the train arrive? Shoji frantically punched numbers into his phone. I'll have to take a taxi. This town was tiny, and I doubted a taxi would arrive quickly. Wait, let's see if we can get someone to drive you. But, but... Something going on? Oh, hello everyone. DeAndre glanced at Shoji, concern reflected on his face. Kyler was not far behind. Shoji's mother is in the hospital. What? Is she okay? Although DeAndre's consideration was genuine, Shoji had a hard time coping with the crowd and struggled to speak. Kyler pulled on DeAndre's arm. He needs space. Kyler finished the sentence in French, and DeAndre glared momentarily before nodding and understanding. We'll inform Hendrick and Dupont. He trembled violently, and I had no idea what to say to help calm him down. It's my fault. I shouldn't have returned here. It's because I'm not tending to the store that... It's not your fault. Don't blame yourself. I heard someone approaching and turned to see Hendrik, who was already holding a set of keys. I heard what happened. Shoji, do you want me to drive you to the hospital? It, it's all the way in Liege. I, I can't impose. This is a family emergency, and a taxi or train will take too long. Don't think of this as a burden. It's important to be with family. Hendrik, thank you. Aw, Hendrik, you're such a good guy. You can thank me once I drop you off. Let's go. Hang in there. I'm sure she's alright. I hope so, too. Once Hendrik's truck pulled out of the driveway, Kyler and DeAndre approached me. What happened, exactly? I summarized what little I knew, and the two exchanged solemn looks. Bummer. Hopefully it's nothing serious. Depends on the fall. If she was unconscious, a concussion will be likely. I've seen enough of those. It might be bad, then. I don't want to think of worst-case scenarios already. Melissa's right. It's too early to speculate when we don't have enough information. Yeah. At least they'll be able to know what's going on thanks to Hendrik. Do any of us have Shoji's number? I have Shoji's email. I'll message him tonight. Sounds good. Please let me know if he responds. It wasn't until dinner time that Hendrik returned. I rushed over to him and he gave me a reassuring smile. Is everything okay? I just dropped Shoji off at the hospital. I gave him my number in case he needs me to pick him up. Yeah, it's understandable. Thanks, Hendrik, for jumping in like that. 
I couldn't let him wait around for the train or a taxi. It was the least I could do. Now go eat. It won't do anyone any good if you don't take care of yourself as well. Dinner was a blur, although I explained the situation to Chantal and Joan when they asked about Shoji's absence. When it was over, I passed the time playing a video game in my tent. Melissa, are you in there? Kyler? <laughs> yeah, my face. I'm here. I hastily opened the flap and eagerly looked up at Kyler. Is his mom okay? Yes, she's fine. She hurt her heel badly and has a minor concussion, but she'll make a full recovery. Shoji will return late, but he'll be here for the festival. Not staying the night or anything? I think he wanted to, but his mom can be persuasive from what it sounds like. It's his first time being away from home this long, so she feels it's good for him. <laughs> sounds like those two are complete opposites. Thanks for telling me. I'm glad it wasn't serious. Aw, thank you, Kyler. He nodded. After he departed, I sank back into my bed, glad my worries were put to rest. Oh, such excitement. I held back a yawn, rocking on my heels. It was early morning, and all of the students gathered around Augustine, who was briefing them on the duties. Wow, this has really changed now. One by one, the students nodded or asked questions. When the instructions finished, everyone scurried off to their assignments. Kyler was kind enough to summarize the speech for me. Kyler, you gotten so chummy all of a sudden. What's going on? And then there's a group that'll need to organize the utensils. Got it. I'll see what I can do to help out. I've never attended an archaeology-themed festival before. I quickly glanced to the side to give my cue. Oh no. <laughs> Melissa. Let's have fun and let's make party! Huh? Let's, let's make party! party. <laughs> At least you got these two on your side. <laughs> yeah, Kyler, Kyler knows what's up. Uh, what did Melissa bribe you with? She owes me a beer. I did it because she asked nicely. Oh, Shoji, you sweetheart. She's taking advantage of your good nature, mate. You have to stand firm around pushy people like her. I gave him a shove. <laughs> Kyler liked that. I'm not pushy. See what I mean? Sorry for being so quiet. My mouth dropped open and... I can't process Hendrik without his ponytail. I can't look at it anymore, I'm just like, poof, there goes my mind. What are we all loitering here for? Did we forget our duties? Not me. I'll be helping with the food preparations. I was translating the lecture for Melissa. I'll leave for the cave now. Oh, um, I was going to ask where all of the supplies for the face painting are. That's why I am here. They're in the lab and ready for you. I can't look at you with your hair loose, man. And what will you be doing, Hendrik? Once I finish labeling all of the rocks in the display I created upstairs, I'll be overseeing things. And yourself? Me? I'll... Help DeAndre with the food prep, help Shoji set up in the face paint station, assist Kyler in the cave. Tag along with you, Hendrik! Join Joan and Chantel in preparing the utensils. Of course I'm gonna help my boo with the food. I'll help with the food preparation. He grinned and clapped me on the back like he'd expected my answer. Of course you did. We made our way to a bunch of tables, each with different vegetables. There were quite a few volunteers involved. What's on the menu? Right, the lecture was in French. Since people will be coming and going at different times, we're making kebabs with skewers. Sco skewers, yes. <clears throat> there will also be Caesar salad, curry cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo? Gosh, couscous. Pasta salad with tomatoes and peppers. All that good stuff. We'll be cutting the vegetables for the skewers. Grabbing a knife, I cut the ends off a red pepper and began jabbing into the center, trying to remove the ribs and seeds. It's easier if you slice open the cylinder first and skin within the pepper that way. 
I corrected myself and was awed at how efficient it was. Thanks, you're pretty good at this. Not really, I've just picked up things here and there. My mom is a sous chef at this fancy restaurant in Namur. In Namur. You know, the type where they serve you elegant dishes that you can finish off in three bites, and they still call it the main course. We dropped the chunks of vegetables into their respective bowls and continued. Meals at home must have been the best, huh? Please, you think someone toiling in the kitchen for eight hours would come home and lovingly cook yet another meal? We'd all handle that, with some guidance hollered from the living room. She'd be in charge of the holiday feast, though. She makes the best turkey with a mushroom-based stuffing. Ooh. Verdant was nun? What? Verdant was nun? I don't know. Rosemarie approached the tables, her eyes scrutiny scru scrutinizing the students before setting on DeAndre. After sizing him up, she gave a nod. You, do you know how to trust a pig? We? Oui. I tilted my head, unfamiliar with the term. The pig arrived, but I can't find Augustine. He usually does it for us. What about asking Hendrik? He should be upstairs. No, he turned a shade of green. I guess he could be a last resort. I can do it. We have rotisseries all the time at family gatherings. Thank you. I'd uh, prefer not to get my hands dirty with this kind of thing. She pointed toward the driveway. There was a rotating spit suspended over a halved oil drum, propped up by cement blocks and debarked branches. Beside it, beside it was a large plastic bag containing something. Pig, maybe? After Rosemarie left, DeAndre set his knife down and flashed a winning smile. No. <sighs> no! How about it, Mel? Wanna see a dead pig? I guess I have to. I don't want to. I've I've seen a dead pig before. <sighs> Man. Uh, sure. I guess I'm still alive, so Melissa will be fine. Curse my curiosity. Why not? Don't forget to wash your hands, just in case. I dutifully followed his advice, and we both met up in front of the plastic bag. I tentatively stepped away while DeAndre leaned over and grabbed the edge. He peeled it back, revealing a very, very whole dead pig lying on its side. Ah! First picture! DeAndre Festival! Uh, amazing. <laughs> the contrast in faces is awesome. Oh, wow. What a porker. It's got to be over 35 kilos. Oh, god, it still has a face. That was my reaction, exactly. Sweet ass. Looks like it's already salted and stuffed, too. <sighs> now, where's the twine? I found it first because I already looked away from the grizzly scene and simply pointed to the items placed on a stool beside the rotisserie. Noticing my discomfort, DeAndre gave me a gentle clap to my shoulder. You don't have to stay for this. But then he'd be alone with that. I still want to help. You can cut the twine. I need about this much. He spread his hands roughly a foot apart. Five or six pieces would be great. That way I can focus on getting the pig onto the spit. Relieved I could be useful, I deliberately angled my back so I couldn't see the pig. I tried to ignore the, uh, noises of metal cutting into flesh and sliding against bone. After I shared the twine, I laid them out on the stool neatly until DeAndre ordered me to pass them to him but one by one. I kept my eyes averted and our fingers carefully made contact before completing the pass. You're okay doing this by yourself? It's a little tricky, since I'd like the pig to be held firmly in place, but... Oh, shit! I saw Pink move out of the corner of my eye. Automatically, I whirled around and grabbed what I thought were the thighs of the animal. The coldness sent shivers through my spine, and the spices could not mask the scent of uncooked meat. 
Oh, I'm touching a dead pig. I'm touching a dead pig. I'm touching a dead pig. Tie it. Tie it, please. Hold it. <laughs> please. <laughs> Help. The pig shifted due to the twine, and I did my best to immobilize it. When DeAndre announced it was secure enough to let go, I jumped back, unsure where to put my arms, which now stank of dead pig. <sighs> no. I'm... I'm gonna be sick. Ugh. I haven't seen this place before. I don't blame you, girl. Feeling better? I turned the faucet off and hastily wiped my mouth before facing him. A bit. Um, thanks for everything earlier. I guess that's the perk of being surrounded by a forest. Hey, good friends point to where you need to go. Best friends hold your hair back while you throw up in the bush. Aww. Uh. Uh, here's your water. Mercy. I weakly grasped the water bottle, then let out a heavy groan, pressing my forehead against the cold plastic. Oh. How embarrassing. DeAndre. M Melissa? Marry this guy. He has let you cry on him, use his shirt as a tissue for blowing your nose, held your hair back while you've thrown up. I mean, he's perfect. What are you doing with your life? It's my fault. I shouldn't have asked. No, I shouldn't have gone in the first place. <laughs> I smirked teasingly and twisted the cap off. Only for you, DeAndre. Well, thanks for going the extra mile for little old me. If you weren't there, I'd have to explain to the team and the many, many visitors why there's no meat for their skewers. Then it'd be me up on that spit instead. <laughs> I snorted into the bottle mid-sip, mentally cursing DeAndre's timing. His wide grin suggested it was intentional. For now, recover. After he left, I idly picked at the paper stuck to the bottle. I'll let my stomach settle first before rejoining everyone. I don't want to look at another animal pre-rotisserie ever again. Here, here, girl. Festival time! Where should I go? Check out Rosemary Flint napping? See what Kyler and DeAndre are up to? Enter the museum or stop by the face paint station? Well, of course, I gotta go see what Kyler and DeAndre are up to. It was easy to find them. They bickered in French as always. Oh my! What? Are, are you guys trying to start a fire? Adorable. Absolutely adorable. Anyway, they were hitting rocks over a large flat stump. Upon closer inspection, the stump had two piles of a dark, shredded material that appeared organic, along with multiple nests of long, dry grass. Making a fire? I joined the curious crowd of bystanders, mostly adults with a few children watching in interest. <clears throat> oh. Excuse me, choking on spit. DeAndre fervently struck the pyrite stones together, while Kyler had a methodical motion. Phew! Phew! <laughs> Fire. The kids frantically pointed, and De DeAndre uttered an exaggerated huh, with a comical expression. He pretended to fumble with the materials, causing the kids to shout directions. Following their excited instructions, he picked up the tightly wound grass and tried to stuff the black material into its center. He barely touched the tinder when he let out a yelp, pretending to burn his finger. As he nursed it, the kids howled with laughter. Kyler simply ignored the performance, his eyes blazing with determination to start a fire. A white wisp of smoke rose from Kyler's pile, and he fed the sparks grass. At first, I thought Kyler would win their little battle, but the bundle extinguished itself. Aww. Groaning, Kyler turned around to grab more grass. DeAndre then gazed at the audience and held a finger to his mouth. Shh. With Kyler unaware, DeAndre pulled out a lighter, causing another ripple of laughter. <laughs> Many kids clapped their hands over their mouths to muffle their giggles. With a playful wink, he ignited the bundle of grass and pumped his fist into the air, claiming himself the victor. Kyler was astonished at first, but then noticed the abandoned rocks. To us cheek. Is it cheek or cheesh? To us cheesh. 
Whoa. No. DeAndre shoved the lighter into his pocket as their banter continued, which was drowned out by the applause of the crowd. DeAndre was a natural at engaging with his audience, but I was happy to see Kyler enjoying himself too. The rest of the day whizzed by due to the constant hustle and bustle. While guests left, Hendrik asked if I wanted to help take down the extra lights and decorations in the cave. Together with Rosemary and Kyler, we successfully stockpiled the cutouts and wrapped up the strong lights. Is that everything? <laughs> I still can't get used to you without your ponytail, man! Seems so. Thanks for helping out. Switching the lights off now. I watched Hendrik as he flicked off multiple switches in the wet screen room, causing the cave to grow dimmer and dimmer until it was completely black. Can you imagine being a Neanderthal walking into a cave for the first time? What thoughts they had as they took their first steps inside? Hmm, these rock formations are pretty cool. Ugh, no! Hendrik, you have no imagination. Melissa, what do you think? Me? I squinted my eyes and stared into the abyss. Well... That it's dark and scary, that it had some fascinating rocks, or it was a perfect shelter. Hmm... It's a perfect shelter. Caves were always a shelter, right? So... A place to stay out of the rain, cook meat, and hoard supplies. They were not hoarders! Neanderthals had high spatial skills, and kept their living quarters organized. Not the sight in Grota Brule. Most, then. I mean, look at us! We're capable of organization, but there's always the odd exception. Like a certain someone who leaves his clothes draped over chairs. <sighs> but I digress. I like to think caves were more than just shelters. Hmm. Like a starless night. Ooh, you look like you have something to say. He hastily glanced at the floor, carefully considering his answer. Well, if a Neanderthal entered a cave for the first time, they'd notice how muted their surroundings would become, save for footsteps and maybe the dripping of water. Without fire, it'd be like witnessing a starless sky. They'd see that the climate inside was stable, and their torches' light wouldn't reach some of the higher ceilings. They'd have to gauge the size with more than just their eyes. They'd be entering a completely different environment. Maybe that's why their paintings were drawn so deep into the caves. It was like a spiritual place for them. Uh. <laughs> wow, Kyler, that was so deep. As deep as this cave. The reflective moment was broken by Rosemary's hearty laughter and a slap to Kyler's shoulder causing him to flinch. <laughs> you seriously thought of this before? See, see, this is what I meant, imagination. I admit, Kyler, I always thought you were a total bore. What's the term you use once, Melissa? Uh, a square? Yes, a square. If I'd known you had a creative side, I would have made a bigger effort to talk to you. Come, let's chat about Neanderthals over some drinks. I'd love to hear more about it. Poor Kyler. Rosemary linked arms with Kyler and stepped toward the exit. Um. He flashed Hendrik a frantic save me look. Hendrik noticed and raised a hand as if to halt Rosemary. Uh, have fun. He wiggled his fingers goodbye. Kyler's mouth dropped, shocked at Hendrik's total lack of effort while Rosemary dragged him outside. <laughs> uh, will he be okay? He'll be fine. It'll be good for him. Uh, on second thought, I should keep an eye on them, knowing Rose. What's that supposed to mean? My goodness. Oh, I never thought I'd be so happy to see a 10 by 10. <sighs> Let's see what we can do here.